Hi guys, today we will learn how to prepare the loan amortization schedule by using negative loan amortization method. Okay, we already know that how to prepare the loan amortization schedule by using these methods in the previous videos. Okay, if you have not watched it, please watch that video link in the description below. Okay, so today we will learn by using this method. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, here we have some the parameters of term value of money. So before I start to follow these parameters, I would like to tell you one thing about this method. Under this method, the total payment will be less than the interest amount as well as our required total payment. Okay, you can see the statement here. Now let's provide the, some random data for these parameters. Okay. So for present value, I'm going to put the $75,000, okay. And now for number of years, I'm going to put three years. Similarly for annual rate of interest, I'm going to put the 12%, okay. Now for compounding method, number of periods and periodic interest rate. We already know that how to calculate it, okay. If you don't know, then please watch the first video of loan amortization method, that is how to prepare the loan amortization schedule by using the reducing balance method okay and now let's calculate the required total payment and it can be calculated by using the pmt function in excel okay so press the equal to sign tap the pmt and now press the tab and now let's provide the information based on this argument okay so for rate let's select this one okay comma for npr that means number of period so for this select this one comma for present value we have to select this one but along with the negative sign okay so press the subtract sign first and then select this one comma for future value so let's provide the value zero now for type let's you know select any value from this list okay it will not affect the calculation of total payment okay so i'm going to put the zero for here okay now press the close parenthesis now press the enter key all right now for here that is actual total payment in this sale we will you know manually put the value okay but based on the concept of this loan amortization method that is we will you know put the value less than from this amount okay because we already know that under this method the actual total payment will be less than required total payment okay we can see here all right so for this i'm going to you know use the data validation tool to control the user input okay so for this click here and go to the data tab and now click on this the data validation and choose the data validation by clicking on it and now click on this arrow and now choose decimal and now for here click on this arrow and choose less than and now click here and now let's you know provide the sale reference okay that is this one okay so click here all right now for click on the error alert tab and let's you know provide the you know title name that is warning okay and now let's you know type some error message like the actual to total payment must be less than required total payment under this method okay now click on okay if you want to check whether this cell is working or not based on the data validation so for this i'm going to type three thousand dollar that is greater than this value let's see what will be the effect all right we can see that means our data validation rule is working all right so for now i'm going to click on cancel button and i'm going to put the value of 500 that is less than this one as well as interest amount okay and uh, we don't know how much the interest will be in the first period or any other periods but uh, however i'm going to put 500 randomly for now okay now press the enter key now let's calculate the future value and it can be calculated by simply adding the interest amount in the present value okay 
So press the equal to sign and now click this one plus this one and now press the enter key. And now for total interest, we will calculate later that is after you know completing this table because this is depend on our table all right we will you know calculate these parameters based on this column okay so let's you know move on to our table so first click here and provide the value zero and now click here and now let's provide the value of present value as an ending balance okay so for this press the equal to sign and i'm going to you know provide the present value by linking the cell so click this one and now let's fix this cell by pressing the FO key. Now press the enter key. Now click here and now provide the value 1, okay, as a period 1. And now select these two period, okay, and drag down up to 1095 because we have used 3 years here, okay. And when we will, you know, convert this year into daily, it will become 1095 period, okay. So that I'm going to, you know, drag from period 1 to 1095 okay so click here and drag down all right 1095 all right now I scroll up and now click here for a beginning balance and let's calculate it so it can be calculated by simply linking this cell that is ending balance okay so press the equal to sign and now click this one and now press the enter key now click here and put the pointer here and double click on this corner to drag down the value okay all right now for payment it can be calculated by simply using the condition that is under this method we will you know paid entire the present value at this period okay otherwise we will you know pay this amount okay so for these two condition let's use the if function so press the equal to sign and type the if function and now let's provide the condition if this equals to this one and now let's fix this cell by pressing the fo key then what will happen yes this one plus interest amount that is this one okay so for this click here and now press up arrow and move to this cell okay to get the cell difference of this cell okay otherwise what will happen yes we will you know simply pay this amount okay and now let's fix this cell by pressing the fo key all right and now press the close parenthesis and now press the enter key and now click here and put the pointer here and double click on this corner to drag down the value okay all right now for interest amount it can be simply calculated by multiplying the periodic interest rate to the beginning balance okay so press the equal to sign and now click this one times this one and now let's fix this cell by pressing the fo key and now press the enter key now click here and put the pointer here and double click on this corner to drag down the value all right now for interest added to principal also known as you know the remaining interest amount that can be calculated by using the condition that is when our payment amount will greater than that interest amount then it will you know become zero otherwise differential amount will be shown here okay so for this we will use the if function so let's use it so press the equal to sign and type the if function now press the tab and now let's make the condition if this one is greater than this one then what will happen yes zero otherwise this minus this and now press the close parenthesis and now press the enter key all right now click here and put the pointer here and double click on this corner to drag down the value okay all right now for principal amount it can be calculated by using the same technique that is this one or that is you know using the condition okay that means when our payment amount will greater than our total interest amount or calculated interest amount then our principal amount will be shown here otherwise the value zero will be shown here okay so for this let's use the if function so press the equal to sign tap the if function now press the tab and now let's make the condition if this will greater than this one then what will happen yes this minus this otherwise zero and now press the close parenthesis and now press the enter key all right now click here and put the pointer here and now double click on this corner to drag down the value okay all right now for ending balance it can be simply calculated by adding the interest amount to the beginning balance and subtracting the principal amount from the beginning balance okay so 
for this let's calculate it so press the equal to sign and now click this one plus this one minus this one and now press the enter key all right now click here and put the pointer here and double click on this corner to drag down the value okay all right we can see all right now click here and scroll down and let's see okay in this period that is at the 36 period we can see our loan amount is showing zero that is the loan amount is fully amortized okay at this period all right and we can see we have you know uh, some of the you know extra extra period data or you know negative value data so for this let's you know hide this data by using the conditional formatting okay so for this first click here and select the range from here to here and now press ctrl shift button from your keyboard and now press the down arrow from your keyboard to select the entire table okay and now scroll up and now click on the home tab and now click on the conditional formatting arrow and now click on new rule and now choose this one and now click here and now let's you know provide the cell reference that is this one okay for here i'm going to manually tap the cell reference okay because we will you know fix the column not row okay so for this first press the equal to sign and put the dollar sign and and type the you know column name that is f and provide the row name row number that is fifth okay all right that means this will greater than this one then we will hide the data okay so press the greater sign and now let's select this one and now click on this format button and choose the font tab and now click on this arrow to select the color and now choose white background and now click on ok and now again click on ok and now click here and scroll down and see all right our unnecessary periods data has been successfully hidden okay you can see now let's calculate the total interest amount and it can be calculated by using the sum if function okay because we will you know sum the interest column from period one to a specific number of period okay that is this one okay so for this we will use the sum if function so first click here and now press the equal to sign and type the sum if function now press the tab and now let's provide the information based on this you know argument so for range so first click here and now press ctrl shift button from your keyboard and now press the down arrow to select the entire you know periods entire range of the you know period column and now let's fix this you know range by pressing the FOP. comma for criteria we will you know make the criteria by you know manually type the less than sign okay so for this press the open quotation mark now press the you know less than or equal to sign press the close quotation mark and now add the end percentage here and now select this one and now let's fix this cell by pressing the FOP. that means we will add only those periods which will be you know less than or equal to this one okay now press a comma and for sum that is we will you know sum this column okay so for this click here and now press ctrl shift button from your keyboard and now press the down arrow to select the entire you know range of this column and now let's fix this column by pressing the fop and now press the close parenthesis now press the enter key all right we can see all right now if you want to check whether the total interest amount is exactly equal to this one or not you can you know add the interest amount from period 1 to 36 period or any specific number of period okay so for this i'm going to you know check this one by adding the interest column so click here and now select from here to here and we can see this amount is exactly equal to this amount okay that means our the interest amount is correct Similarly, for future well, we can, you know, add up the payment column. Okay, so we can, you know, select from here to here. You can see this amount is exactly equal to this one. Similarly, for our, you know, principal amount, we have uh, this one that is greater than this one. Why? Because of, you know, additional interest payment amount. Okay. All right. Now, if I, you know, change the compounding method from monthly to any other's compounding method, let's see what will be effect in the amortization schedule okay so for example i'm going to select annually okay you can see similarly for semi annually you can see quarterly you can see monthly you can see weekly you can see and daily you can see all right okay 
you can see this value is showing in negative form why because we have you know put the 500 dollar as an actual total payment which is greater than our required total payment that's why these value are showing in negative value okay if you will you know change this value from 500 to you know less than this one suppose i'm going to put the 50 dollar you can see you can see all right all the values are now in the positive form all right so this is the you know concept of this method all right so guys we learned how to you know prepare the loan amortization schedule by using the negative loan amortization method that's all for now if you have any query regarding this video please ask me in the comment box below and if you find it useful please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to this channel see you in the next video signing off